Good day folks! Welcome to Sport Fishing on the Fly on the Bench. Today I'm going to tie you up a version of Todd Oishi's Coho Bugger. The Coho Bugger was created by Todd uh, many years ago. It's been a really popular fly around here in BC for both coho and cutthroat and Todd even says it works for rainbow trout in some of the interior lakes. So my version I think I tie about uh, 10 years ago I think I created this one. It's just got a little variation of a red collar and the body material is a bit different underneath. And they both work fantastic, both versions. I mainly fish mine for cutthroat, uh, only because I can't fish coho all year round. So let's head to the bench and I'll tie it up for you. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For hook, I'm using a gamagatsu. It's a size four bonefish hook. I've been using these recently for my salmon hooks. They're really good hooks. For bead, I'm using a 1 8 gold bead. For thread, I'm using Superfly Classic Waxed in Red, and it's uh, 8 aught. For the tail, I'm using Hairline Crosscut Two Toned Rabbit Strips in Black Olive. It's the olive with the black tips. For Flash, I'm just using uh, Crystal Flash by Semper, Semper Flash. Semperfly. It's just uh, like a pearl color. For the body, I'm using small to medium uh, gold chenille, sparkle chenille. And also for the body, I'm using palmer chenille in small and it's olive. So to begin, I've gone ahead and I've wound my thread down to the point where the barb would be on the hook, which I've crimped. Next, take your um, rabbit strip. And this is the cross cut rabbit. It's the shorter of the rabbit strips. I believe this does come in longer. I've bought it longer. I most often buy it for my size 10 streamer that I tie in this for cutthroat because I fish it more than I fish coho, but this will work. It's long enough. Um, Todd prefers using rabbit in his. However, you can use marabou. He says that's just fine. If all you have is marabou, that's totally fine. So just tie that down. And solid. Next, take your crystal flash. I'm just trying to pick mine up here. And I'm just going to bring my thread forward a couple of wraps and tie it down on the side closest to me first, making sure it's right down the side of the hook and then the side away from me. You can always check with your vise to make sure. And I snip it off about just the length of the tail or a little bit shorter. Fine. It's got some rabbit coming out of there. Make sure I got enough. It's not a very big tail. Next take the Palmer chenille and if it's... see how this piece has got... this little piece is kind of messed up on the end? Just cut that off. It makes it way easier to deal with. And then snip a little bit from the string right at the very beginning to tie down on and then just tie that on the side of the hook. Next take your gold chenille and just strip off a little bit off the front leaving some exposed uh, string to tie down on. Just give that a few wraps and then bring your thread forward. The trickiest part of this fly as well as my number nine fly is getting the collar right for me. It, if you don't, if I don't build a thread dam behind the bead, I find my collar either comes out too fat, <laughs> too short, I don't know, like too thin, too bulky. It just doesn't never works right for me. So I find this a really, really helpful that I just started doing recently. And also the materials on my flies sometimes when I first start tying these ones would slip, and so I make sure I really tie things down tight on this fly. It gets hammered by coho. And you want it to last more than one fish. So just go ahead and palmer your, um, wrap your chenille, sorry, up the hook shank in close touching turns. Bring it right to the front and snug it right up to the bead. Because that's also helpful with the collar. I'm just going to tie it off. Take a couple in front, or a couple in back, a couple in front. The difference between the original coho bugger and this version is that A, I use red thread and Todd does not use gold chenille in his. He just takes the palmer chenille and he twists it and spins it and then he winds it up the hook. 
And he also uses it with a, a chartreuse bead. I found out. I've never tried mine with a chartreuse. I should though. So just wrap this just like a hackle um, up the hook chain. I sort of palmer it on a diagonal is how I do it. And leave space in between so you can see the gold in between. And then just keep brushing it back if it's getting wild to deal with. Because sometimes it can twist and turn this stuff. When I first started using it, it was uh, it didn't seem like great quality, but this stuff is really good quality that I have that I'm working with. So and it will make a difference with this fly, especially when you tie lots of them. So when I get to the front, sorry, make two complete turns of this material. And um Randy found that that keeps the fly from spinning in the uh, water as much. I tried to tie one without making those two turns and it just didn't work out right. And then just snip that off. And I'm just gonna make sure that I'm right up on top of that bead. And there's no space in there. And then go ahead and uh, whip finish. I always do two. Just gonna take a little bit. Um, I've got some loon. Got a couple different around me. I've just got some loon hardhead. You could use UV resin or I use nail polish for years, but I'm trying to get used to using glues and resins and stuff again. Oh, one sec. I messed up my rotary thing when I was messing around with my vise. I was trying to spin it. I'm just gonna have to do it by hand here. And just make sure you coat that really well because it's going to be in the in the salt and I did not so I'm just going to take a little bit off yeah that should be good it's usually good to have a piece of paper towel when you're working with <laughs> resins and glues and stuff in case that happens you get too much on it or whatever so I have one just off this side here I'm going to wipe my hand on and there you have it the coho bugger variation so to watch all of our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head over to the website at www.sfotf.ca and make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube before you go to catch all of our latest Pro Staff Bench segments and they have uh, classic shows. And as well on the uh, website I was going to mention, they got contests and stuff that go on Facebook and stuff. So check it all out. Thanks for joining me on this edition of On the Bench at Sport Fishing on the Fly. Take care, everyone. Conserve the waters and tight lines.